Hi, Rama. It's week three, day four of our Bible narrative reading plan. Today we're in Psalms 6 and 7. There's several things I want to point out to you about these psalms. First, you notice that on many of the psalms, uh, but not all of the psalms, there are inscriptions, and they give us uh, information about the psalms. Now, some of it is not as important to us because we are not musicians during that time period, and so we don't always understand some of the words and what they meant, uh, but we see that in Psalm 6 it was written and intended for a choir. It's written to the choir master with stringed instruments, and then it says, according to the Sheminith, which is a word that we don't necessarily understand, but we know that it's a musical term. But then we see that it says it's a psalm of David. David has written this psalm, and we know that these inscriptions are inspired as well because for several reasons, but one is that Christ references these inscriptions in the New Testament. So he referred to them as being authoritative. And so we know uh, that when it says it was written by David, that it means it was written by David. And so we look at this, and, and we see that... Uh, this is a penitential psalm, which means that uh, it's a psalm that shows someone confessing their sin and, and crying out to God for mercy. And we look at this, and we don't necessarily understand every detail of what was going on in David's life, and yet we see uh, David crying out to God for his mercy. He begins with, Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, and discipline me in your wrath. And then he asks for God's graciousness to him, and he goes on, and you see even in verses six and seven uh, how how difficult his his guilt is, and uh, it's affecting even his sleep at night. Uh, David is very troubled, but then in verse nine, something very important, he says, "The Lord has heard my plea; the Lord accepts my prayer." And so the psalm begins with David filled with sorrow, but it ends uh, on a very different note, and that's because David has confessed his sin and he's received God's mercy. When we look at Psalm 7, again, we see that inscription, and it doesn't tell us everything we might like to know, um, but we understand, again, that this is written by David, uh, and we don't know exactly the circumstances, but we see that David, again, is crying out to God uh, to be his refuge, and he's, he's asking God to weigh his actions. Lord, if I've done this, if there's wrong in my hands, uh, you know, judge me, Lord, but he continues on through it, and by the end of it, he says something very interesting. Verse 17, he says, I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. So again, David uh, begins a psalm with one attitude, but by the end of it, it's changed because no matter what sorrow he's going through, he's cast his cares upon the Lord, as the New Testament says. He's crying out to God for help, and he's trusting in God that even no matter how difficult the circumstances may be, he trusts that God cares for him and God uh, will meet his every need. And so he ends this psalm saying that he will give thanks to the Lord. And even though we weren't reading Psalm 8 and Psalm 9 today, if you do keep reading, you see that he ends Psalm 7 saying he will give thanks. He begins Psalm 8 by giving thanks. And he begins Psalm 9 by again saying, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. So the Psalms are very important in helping shape our emotions and our affections and helping us understand how we can respond to God even when uh, the days are difficult and dark. Here's a summary of today's reading. For more information, go to tunemyheart.org.